Whether you're starting a nonprofit or growing an existing nonprofit, designing and carrying out an effective program is the key to fulfilling your nonprofit's social impact mission. No matter what that mission is, from combating food insecurity to ending homelessness to helping kids get a good education. But how can you know if your program ideas for your nonprofit are gonna be the most effective programs? Or how do you know which ones are going to make the deepest social impact? Or what if you have multiple ideas for programs? How do you know which one to choose? In this video, I'm gonna share six questions that you should consider when you are designing a new program for your nonprofit that will help you get to the heart of the answers to these questions. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Amber Melanie Smith. I'm a nonprofit founder and executive director. I love making these videos here on YouTube all about topics like creating a social impact, starting nonprofit organizations, and a lot more. Don't forget to give this video a like if you find it helpful and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I also have a website, founder2fulltime.com, where I feature a couple of online trainings that help people who want to start or grow a nonprofit organization. So be sure to check that out. And if it's for you, I look forward to seeing you in my online training. All right, I'm just gonna jump right into these six questions with question number one. And I think it's my favorite one. And the question is this, if your program succeeds, if you achieve it, you achieve your goals, everything's great. If your program succeeds, how does your community or the world look different than it would have before your program existed? This is such a critical first question to consider, and here's why. When I'm talking to people who are developing their nonprofit concepts and thinking through the first stages of their programming, I often hear them describe the activities that they want to do as a nonprofit, the day-to-day the -day things that their programs will do. They talk about these things first or their ideas for these things first before they talk about the communities needs, the feedback that they've gotten from the community, um, the ultimate outcome or mission that they hope that their nonprofit will achieve through these programs. And the reason that is dangerous is because if you think about the activities first before studying the needs and thinking of the ultimate outcome you want to achieve, you might be coming up with programs or activities that don't actually really meet the needs of your community. So this particular question is inspired by Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And if you're familiar with that text, then you probably know that the question that I asked aligns best with his notion of beginning with the end in mind. The idea here is that you're gonna zoom out. You're going to look at the big picture of your organization and you're going to imagine yourself and this organization years in the future a time when you've achieved your goals and you've achieved your organization's mission, you're gonna ask yourself, what does it look like? How is the world different now? And this is a question that I find also often trips people up who are not used to thinking in these terms. So here's my advice. It is a little bit of an abstract question. It requires a little bit of imagination, but keep it simple. You don't have to get too complicated. In fact, the best answers to this question are short and to the point. Think of it as completing this sentence. If my nonprofit's programs succeed, blank. So here are a couple of examples and I'll show you just how succinct and to the point we can get with these. If my nonprofit's programs succeed, no child will ever be hungry in my city again. If my nonprofit's programs succeed, the blue whale will no longer be endangered. If my nonprofit's programs succeed, there will be an affordable home for every veteran in my region. So see, it doesn't have to be too complicated. You're just dreaming here. This is this should be the why of why you're starting a nonprofit in the first place because kids being hungry in your city makes you angry and makes you want to take action or veterans not being able to afford homes makes you angry and makes you want to take action and, and start a nonprofit and tackle this problem. This is ultimately you saying why you're doing this in the first place. So I encourage you to practice this, you know, get out a piece of paper or write on your whiteboard if you were like me and you're a huge nerd and you have a whiteboard in your room or just, you know, practice writing it out, text it to yourself, whatever. 
And let me just reiterate, doing this step first is important for two reasons. The first is you need to be able to clearly articulate your why to strangers off the street who have no idea who you are, what you're about, what your organization's about. You need to be able to clearly articulate why you're doing this to people like that. And second, the answer to this question will become you and your organization's North Star as you're taking on other programs in the future and developing this program. It will help guide the way you message your organization, how you talk about your mission, the types of people you recruit to help your cause. It will affect so many other decisions in your organization. So if you can just clearly articulate your why now, then you'll be able to use it as a guide for many years to come. Okay, so I hope that that was clear. And the second question is going to build on your answer to that first question. Here's the second question. What obstacles are standing in the way preventing that future that you just described in question one from becoming reality? So thinking of some of the examples I gave before, how I would approach answering this one, okay, well thinking through why are children hungry in my city? Why is the blue whale endangered? So asking yourself, what are the root causes? What's going on with this problem in the world that it hasn't been solved yet? So basically, what are the reasons this problem exists? What are the root causes underlying and causing this problem to persist? So here's the thing. <laughs> Problems are often very, very complicated and you're not gonna find one, usually, you're not gonna find one simple, clear explanation for why people are hungry or why there's not enough homes for everyone. Um, Problems are very complicated. There's a lot of people and, and players and stakeholders and sometimes unfortunately politics and there's all these reasons something might be the way it is. So I recommend brainstorming at least three to four uh, contributing factors to why this problem still exists. This is a really great exercise that you can do with your team, whether that's um, if you have staff or your board of directors or your team of volunteers that's helping you get this thing off the ground, or if you're by yourself, you can do it that way too. But this is a great exercise to really help you think through <laughs> how would you legitimately solve this problem and, and end it for good if that's what you were trying to do. And just like question two built on your answer to question one, question three builds on your answers from questions one and two. And the question number three is this, what obstacle from the list of obstacles that you just came up with should be the one that your program that you're designing focuses on? One way to think about making progress in your community or in society is to Focus your programs on removing the obstacles standing in the way of progress. So you're gonna take a look at the list of three or four or possibly more root causes or obstacles to tackling the problem that you listed in question two. You're gonna think about two aspects of that list. The first thing you're gonna think about is which items on this list, if solved, could move the needle the most towards affecting this problem. So that's part one. And part two is going to be which aspect or which problem on this list, which obstacle on this list is getting the least amount of attention from other organizations or other people right now. Let's think about that first part first. Looking at the list of obstacles, which one, or I guess two, um, could you remove first to make the most amount of progress on solving that problem. And if this is still a little bit of an abstract concept, let me go back to our example of children being hungry in our city to talk you through it. All right, these are purely hypothetical examples, but let's say you're analyzing the problem of child hunger in your city and you determine that there are four interconnected factors that are contributing to this problem still being a problem. Let's say those four things are lack of access to fresh and healthy foods in under-resourced neighborhoods, or school lunch programs funding has been decreased, or low-income families are having to face high costs on rent and utilities and other necessities, so they have to make hard choices and can't afford the food, 
or perhaps it is a lack of access to affordable health care that is forcing them to make those hard decisions about purchasing food. So four possible reasons that child hunger in our city is continuing to be a problem. Now, all of these might be important factors as to why the problem is still a problem, but the key here is for you to think about which one or two, um, if you tackle those, will make the biggest impact on the problem right now. And this is not necessarily an easy thing to answer, so I always, always recommend talking to people in your community, finding experts on these issues, interviewing other organizations, doing good work on these topics, really, really study and do heavy research to get to the heart of these things. And the second factor I mentioned earlier in determining which of these obstacles you might focus your program on is which one is getting the least amount of attention. So let's say you determine um, access to health care is, is a pretty big reason that child hunger persists for families, but there are three other organizations doing really, really solid work on making sure that families can get access to affordable health care. And so perhaps since it's getting some attention, you would want to focus your efforts in a different angle. So to get at the heart of this one, again, you want to identify the other organizations and leaders in the community that you are serving and take a look at what they're doing, talk to them, collaborate with them, and understand which areas are getting the least attention and might be a place or a space that you might want to focus your program's attention on. All right, now we're getting into some of the logistics here. Question number four is what specific activities can your program focus on that will effectively get to the root of these issues? So at this point, you've thought about your, your ultimate outcome that you're going for. You've thought about the obstacles and the root causes behind the problem that your nonprofit's program is trying to tackle. And you've prioritized and talked to other experts in the community to identify which areas are the most critical and also getting the least amount of attention. Now it's time to think through the actual day-to-day -day activities that your nonprofit program will do to tackle the root causes that you decided to focus on. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that this point right here, talking about the day-to-day -day activities of your program, is often the starting point when people are thinking about their program. But I hope that you see that by taking a step back and zooming out and starting with the end in mind, that by thinking through the ultimate outcome and the priorities of the community and which areas are getting the least attention, that you're actually gonna be able to come up with a deeper, more effective program than you would have been able to if you just started here instead. Okay, so how do you come up with the day-to-day -day activities of your program? Let's think back. You have gotten the, the list of obstacles and you've talked to your community. You've decided using the example that we've been using already, child hunger in your city. You've determined that uh, school lunch programs being defunded is one of the top reasons that kids are still going hungry in the city. Well, this is helpful because now you can figure out all the various ways that you can tackle that problem. Increase school funding, get other resources to those schools for lunches, etc. Maybe the program that you design is going to focus on mobilizing the community to petition for increasing that school lunch funding back up. Maybe the program involves um, building out food pantries within schools. Maybe it's going to involve identifying which children and families are most impacted by this issue within each school and bringing resources directly to their neighborhoods. You'll know your unique community and which options might play out best, but another way to decide which approach to, do, to take and which activities to focus on day to day for your program involves your particular skill sets and the strengths of your team. If you have a team that is full of really excellent carpenters, then maybe building the shelving for food pantries is going to be the most effective thing you can do because not only is that a need, but you're also really good at it. It's your core competency. Or maybe your team has a bunch of leaders in the community who are really, really well socially connected, and it would be easy to mobilize a lot of people to create an impact here. Well, then maybe your approach involves uh, something more like that petition to get the school funding, uh, school lunch funding back up. So you wanna think about what skills and talents and resources do you uniquely possess 
that will be effective in tackling this issue. All right, question number five, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. What is your plan for the program? You've done your research, you've picked your angle, you've figured out the basic day-to-day -day activities. What are your goals for the first year? What are your goals for year number three? What are your goals for the long-term future? And how are you going to define them each year? To create your actual program plan, I recommend using SMART goals. Perhaps you've heard of this, but just in case you haven't, SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and time bound. Had to think there for a second. So one example of a SMART goal might be, using our example from before of child hunger, our program will build three food pantries in schools in the next year. It is specific. You're talking about three food pantries. That's pretty specific. That's also measurable. It's achievable. It's not too big of a goal, not too small of a goal. goal. It's relevant to your ultimate mission, the ultimate vision that you talked about in question number one, and it's time bound. You're going to do it this year. So what are some SMART goals for your program's first year or two? And the final question is also a very important question. What resources do you need to carry out your program plan? And by resources, I'm talking about money, human power, tools, equipment, supplies, materials, marketing, whatever it might be. We all know that these projects take resources and even wonderfully generously gifted volunteer time is still a resource that needs to be effectively managed. So at this stage, you're thinking down to these details. What are the specific items or staffing or um, marketing that you're going to need in order to effectively reach the SMART goals that you laid out to tackle the priority problem that you identified to achieve your ultimate vision of that better world in the future? Is it $5,000? Is it three staff members? Is it a really great website? Whatever it might be, you need to list it on your pro uh, program plan, your piece of paper, whatever you're working with right now. And then you need to figure out your plan for how are you going to obtain these resources? That is built into your program plan as well. If you need to raise $5,000, how are you going to do that? If you need to recruit 100 volunteers, where will you find them? Who will they be? And what will your messaging be to inspire them to join your cause? These resources are the fuel that goes in the gas tank of your vehicle to make your program run. So there you have it. If you can answer these six questions, you're going to have a program that is very deeply and effectively aligned with the ultimate mission of your organization and the needs of your community. And it's going to be a very, very impactful program. So I'd love to hear about what you think at this point. Are you starting a nonprofit or growing a nonprofit or trying to think of a new program to launch? What are some of the questions that you're thinking through as you are developing your program concepts? Share in the comments below. I always love to hear from you. And as I mentioned before, if you are starting a nonprofit or trying to develop a sustainable fundraising plan to grow your nonprofit, my website foundertofulltime.com has some featured trainings that are available for you to check out. And I hope you can join me there. If you're looking for resources for nonprofit leaders and change makers, I also do have a pretty awesome, of course I'm biased, newsletter that I send out about once a month that you can subscribe to and I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. And of course you can opt out anytime. Finally, I have a Facebook group, Change the World or Bust. We've got, I wanna say almost 3,000 people in there from just all around the world. It's really inspiring. Um, everyone who just wants to make a difference in their own unique, special way, talking about how they're doing that and getting some encouragement from others in the group. So I hope you can join me there too. Once again, let's change the world or bust. I am Amber Melanie Smith. It's been great chatting with you today and I hope to see you next time. Bye.